Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome to yet another installment of the Loom Wars series, Loom Wars Episode 10. I've got no subtitle for you. We've now skipped ahead of the franchise. No more Skywalker Saga movies will be made, which is probably not a bad thing given the quality of the last couple. Anyway, you can come up with your own subtitle. People often ask me, Jody, why don't you assemble all the previous winners of Loom Wars and have one big mega loom battle? I would love to do that. It's a great idea, but unfortunately I can't because at least two of the winners of previous installments were on loan and I've probably sold all of the other winners that I bought myself. I did realise today though with this particular gathering of eight that I have included four brands that have won their episodes before, those being Hemel, Mark and Son, Citizen and Formex. So the competition today is as strong as ever. Let's flip the camera and meet today's contenders. All right, here are today's eight contenders in their quarter final pairings. We have seven dive watches today and one field watch over there. It is a Formex though, and Formex do have form, pun intended. The Formex Reef won its installment of Loom Wars two or three Loom Wars back. So what have we got today? Who is going head to head? Well, starting from left to right, it's the Phoebus Kraken. I liked the Phoebus Kraken when I reviewed it a couple of months ago. I said, if you couldn't be bothered waiting for a helm, you should certainly have a look at one of these. Stainless steel bezels are so hot right now. I've got two of them on the table and that snakeskin strap is very very interesting, but we're not really concerned about that today. Does the loom cut the mustard? It's going head to head with a watch that I know the loom is really good. It's the Orient Star Diver. This one has already beaten a Citizen Fuku and a Seiko King Samurai when I put those three head to head in a Japanese heavyweight fight club a couple of months back. Can it beat the Kraken? We shall see. Moving on then to our Swiss pairing. It's Formex's new field watch, simply called Field. No prizes for that one. Sandwich dial though, you always get decent loom on a sandwich dial. Can it beat the most expensive watch on the table today? The Tudor Black Bay 58 18 karat gold coming in at around 17 and a half thousand US dollars. It is however just a Black Bay 58 at heart so you don't necessarily get 17 and a half thousand dollars worth of loom or do you? We'll find out soon. Next quarter final pairing is the one I'm most interested in seeing. The Hemel Sea Dart Full Loom Dial. Now a Full Loom Hemel won the last installment of Loom Wars just before Christmas. Very, very impressive, their chronograph. This is a slightly older model, but Marvin, the brand owner, assures me that the C3 on here is outstanding. We shall see. It's going head to head with another micro brand, a brand new micro brand in fact, so new that this is a prototype. I wouldn't normally include a prototype in Loom Wars, but it really blew me away with how good the Loom was when I reviewed this one a couple of weeks ago. It's the Namika Shirahama Classic. These are currently live on Kickstarter. I'll leave links to all of these watches in the description of the video. 350 USD will get you one of these. It's the cheapest watch on the table today. Our last pairing is a couple of hardcore dive watches. First up, it's the Mark and Son. This is from their professional series. Again, Mark and Son won with their GMT a few years ago. This is a rock solid watch. I have to say, very, very well made. These are about 650 euros. You can expect to see a review of this one in April. But can it beat the Beast. I love this Citizen. One of the most entertaining watches I have ever reviewed on the channel. Fabulously ridiculous, but ridiculously fabulous. But is the loom any good? Let's find out. All right, so Phoebus on the left and Orion on the right. The Phoebus is displaying what is almost a microbrand trope these days in the form of bicolored loom, C3 and BGW9. C3 for the majority of the indices and the tips of the hands, BGW9 for the majority of the hands and the tips of the indices. The Orient demonstrating no such frippery, just a solid fill of green colored loom on the hands, the indices, and on that loom triangle. Now I put fresh batteries in my UV torch to charge these ones up. My camera films 20 minute chunks at a time. If 20 minutes is not sufficient to separate the two watches, I'll go to another 20 and another 20 and even another 20 if necessary. Now that doesn't sound impressive, an hour of loom, big deal Jody. My camera is not nearly as sensitive as the human eye. If we're going for an hour, that is very much all through the night loom, eight hours, 10 hours, that type of thing. So you get the idea. 
I think you also get the idea of who's going to win here. The Phoebus is strong. On another day, with another group of watches, the Phoebus could have gone a lot further. But this isn't another day. It's today. As such, it gets knocked out in the quarterfinals. It's the Orient that moves on to the semis. Next up, it is the Formex Field on the left and the Tudor. It could only be a Tudor or a knockoff Tudor with those snowflake hands on the right. Like I said, it's the biggest price gap between these two watches, almost $17,000 between them. But as discussed, money doesn't necessarily buy you Loom. I've had several watches well under $200 take out their episodes of Loom Wars. And I've had disappointing results from far, far more expensive watches. And let's not forget, most of the monetary value of the Tudor is in its precious metals. It's not necessarily in the loom filling the hands and the indices. However, after 20 minutes today, I think it is again fairly clear which of these two is going to take out the quarterfinal. There's nothing wrong with the Formex, but the larger hands, the larger indices of the Tudor, and the fact that they are brighter means that it is the one that moves on to the semi finals. Okay, this is the quarterfinal matchup that I have been most excited to see. Hemel on the left, quite clearly you can see the brand name and all of that detailing because it's a full loom dial and the Namika Shirahama Classic on the right there. Now I featured a bunch of different full loom dials on Loom Wars before. The Hemel's gone for the kind of loom on top of loom. Loom dial, negative Arabics, negative markings, but they've also loomed the hands rather than relying just on the dial. Sometimes this tactic works, sometimes this tactic doesn't work. We'll see what happens today, won't we? The loom on the Namika is just bomb. Bonkers. BGW9 filling the indices, the hands, and particularly the bottom half of the bezel insert. But hey, you don't tell the time by reading the bottom half of the bezel insert. All that counts for naught if the hands fade first. And do they? Well, let's crank up the speed and find out. At the end of the 20 minutes, it's clear we're going to have to go on to another 20 minutes. By the time we get towards the end of that 20 minutes, though, it's clear that the Hemel is not going to be beating the Namica here. Namica very much brighter, hands, indices, and bezel insert. The Hemel has a stunning initial glow, but it doesn't have the legs to take out the Namica here. The Namica moves on. And finally then, it's the Mark and Son on the left and that Citizen Beast on the right. The Citizen, by far the biggest watch on the table. Doesn't look that big after dark, does it? I commented on that in the review. It's a massive case with a massive bezel, a massive chapter ring and not a particularly big dial and handset. Chunky hands though, certainly plenty of loom on those. And we have a tonal mismatch here. BGW9 on the Mark and Son and a green coloured loom on the Citizen on the right. BGW9, if well applied, is outstanding. It is probably my preferred loom after dark. If badly applied though, it can be really, really disappointing. Talking of badly applied, have a look at the hands on the Citizen. They may be big, they may be bright, but they're very, very patchy. That was something I also noted in the review. All right, we've gone beyond 20 minutes. We're up closer to half an hour, heading towards 40 minutes. I had to take these two a little bit further as well. In the end, I stopped, I paused, I slowed it down to 1x, and I had a look at these two on a couple of different monitors, and in my view, it was very, very hard to separate them, but I went for the Mark and Son, the BGW9 being a little bit brighter in the end than the green colored loom on the Citizen. Not by much, but the Mark and Son moves forward. First semi-final then, Orient Star Diver on the left, and the Gold Tudor on the right. Tonally similar, these two, you can see there's a size difference between the two watches. The Orient is about a 43 mil, whereas the Tudor has that Black Bay's slim 39 millimeter profile. All right, let's turn the speed up on the two of these and see how they do. And I think it is obvious quite early who's gonna win this one. That Orient is such a strong offering. I was really impressed with it when I reviewed it. I said it was criminally underrated for a $500 dive watch. I'm as guilty of underrating Orient in general as anybody else. I've given far, far more attention to Seiko's divers at that price point over the last five years that I've been running this channel and I've rather ignored Orient no longer. The Tudor simply gets nowhere. The Orient is our first finalist. But who will be joining it there? Will it be the Namica on the left or the Mark and Son on the right? Interestingly, both of these watches have gone for a similar tonal match here, BGW9, and they both have 
heavy loom applications to the hands, the indices, and also to the bezel inserts. As discussed, it's not really about the bezel insert, but it's not bad, is it? As discussed, it's not really about the loom and the bezel insert. It is more about the dial and particularly the hands, but I'm never going to complain about a nice shiny bezel insert. After dark, it always gives a watch such presence and generally helps align the eyes if you are trying to get an at a glance leading in low light conditions. When I turn the speed up on these two, you can see a nice consistent, even fading across the board hands, indices, and bezel inserts all fading in unison. That's the sign of a well-made watch. That's the sign of a really considered loom application. We're almost at the end of the second 20 minute period. I'm gonna slow this back down to one X at about the 40 minute. I'm gonna make a call here. I think it is clear that both of these watches have good loom, but the Namica has great loom. All right, it's the grand finale, Namica on the left, Orient on the right. As discussed, the Namica is a prototype. I wouldn't normally include a prototype in Loom Wars because generally prototypes, the Loom isn't fantastic. If Namica can improve on that for production units, they're gonna have one of the best Loom watches under 500 US dollars. I was generally pretty impressed with the design and the build quality of these, but can it beat the Orient in today's final? We shall find out. Now, 20 minutes, there was nothing between these two. I had to go to 40. 40 minutes, there was nothing between these two, I had to go to 60. The end of 60 minutes, they were still pretty much nothing between these two. I added on one more 20 minutes. We're well over the hour here, folks, today. Very, very difficult to split these two up. It just goes to show the quality of the loom on both of the watches. Here we are at about an hour and 10 minutes. I felt that was quite enough, and I slowed it back down to 1x. I also had a look at these on two different monitors as well. Now, the indices on the Namica are still glowing brightly, but the hands have faded. So today, the victory goes to the Orient. Congratulations, Orient Star Diver. Enjoy your moment in the sunshine. It is well earned. Apart from the typical cheap clasp that you get on one of these $500 Japanese big brand divers, this thing is rock solid. The looks might not be to everyone's taste and the power reserve meter, I know it's a bit of a thing for Grand Seiko, for Orient, for some of the Japanese brands. I've never been a massive fan of them myself, but hey, it's like knowing that your petrol tank is full all of the time, so it does have advantages. What an outstanding watch though. One of the most impressive budget divers that I have reviewed ever on the channel. They're getting harder to find these. I've seen them ridiculously priced on eBay, seven, eight hundred dollars. If you can pick one up for less than five hundred dollars in any of the colors and you're okay with the looks and the bulky size, jump on it because these are only gonna get harder to find and therefore more expensive to find. Very, very well made and the fact that it takes out Loom Wars episode 10 is testament to that. If you love Loom as much as I love Loom, why not check out a couple of previous installments? Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day.